welcome to episode 11 of the Mingled Yarncast. My name is Steven, and I'm your host. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as knitven. And today is going to be my Rhinebeck recap. And actually, that includes Woolen Folk and the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. I went to both, and I will talk to you about both. Um, there's a lot to talk about, <laughs> as probably many of you know. And uh, we'll talk about all of it in just a moment. But uh, before we do, let me give you some updates on some of the non-yarn-related things going on in my life uh, so that, uh, yeah, you may stay abreast of my goings-on if that interests you at all. Um, the first interesting thing is that I'm going to be in a production of Stephen Sondheim's play The Frogs, which is um, going to be performed next weekend at the time that I'm filming this. Hopefully I will also put this up tonight. Um, today is the 27th of October. So a week from today, on November 3rd and 4th, we'll be performing, we being Master Voices, the choir that I sing with, we'll be performing the Frogs at uh, the Lincoln Center, Jazz at Lincoln Center, which is on 59th Street and I think Columbus Avenue. And um, the Frogs is a musical that's based on the play by the same name by Aristophanes. So it's based on an ancient play and it's a fun uh, romp and I play one of the frogs as well as one of the worshippers of Dionysus. There's songs about wine, there's songs about frogs, there's, there's, there's all of it. It's Sondheim, so it's witty, it's fun, and it's very catchy. And we're doing three shows, so um, if you are interested, I believe they're all sold out, but there is a wait list, so you could potentially go and see uh, if you could get a ticket still. But I uh, would love to see you. If you do go, let me know in the comments, and uh, I will be sure to say hello. The other thing that I'm doing, not performing, but going to see uh, tomorrow night, I'm very excited. I'm going to go see Depeche Mode at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. All of you are like, Stephen, that's not a musical. That's not uh, classical music. That's not Shakespeare. I know. I know people. I know. But I'm a man of many and diverse tastes, and I'm also very Gen X, a kid of the 80s and 90s, and Depeche Mode was part of that soundtrack of my life, so I'm pretty excited about that too. Um, I think that's about it for the, uh, the updates and the, the catch-you-ups. So let's get to the fun stuff, shall we? I just want you to see, I've taken so many notes here. Um, didn't quite go on to the other page yet, but I, I want to make sure that I talk about a lot here because this weekend, last weekend, um, during the, the festivals, uh, I just, I was able to see so many people, um, people that I've known for a while, people that are new friends, people that uh, I've met because you watch this podcast and that was really, really exciting. I mean, I, I don't know, I didn't know who, if, if I'd see anybody at all, um, but quite a few people came up to say hello, and um, it really meant a lot. It m made me realize that there's um, a great value in putting this together. It is a lot of work, but it is a lot of fun, too, and um, yeah, just hearing people share that, you know, sharing these different pieces that I've made inspired them to do the same thing, or, or um, even choosing to uh, <laughs> take my book recommendations to heart and, and read them. It's very cool. Um, so I'm very grateful for all of that, for all of you, and for you saying hello. And, and never hesitate. Um, please always do reach out if you have uh, anything you want to share or just say hi. So anyhow, um, and I'm going to be sharing some pictures and, and some more specific details about those. I, I made a list, and I'm trying to recall everyone that I chatted with. And I will share pictures if I took one with you. <laughs> so that's coming in the recap as we go along. Okay, so let's see here. What to tell you first? Well, I guess we'll start at the very beginning. Um, I had initially thought that I would only go up for one day, uh, for the Saturday for um, New York Sheep and Wool, because I couldn't do both days. Last year I went both days. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I, I wish I could have gone both days, but um, I had a rehearsal for the Frogs and I had um, a wedding to go to Sunday night last week. So uh, I, I wasn't able to stay. It's a good thing that I didn't just go up for the one day because if I had, I would have probably gotten there around noon or so 
And around that time, noon, on Saturday, I got a message that the train that I was supposed to take back that day was canceled because there was a landslide, a mudslide that covered the tracks somewhere between Rhinebeck and Albany. And all the trains were canceled. And they rescheduled me for the morning, but then that got canceled too. So I was quite lucky that uh, my friend Miguel, who I'm going to talk about here in a minute, uh, connected me with a friend of his named Dan, who was happening to drive back to the city that night. And um, I caught a ride with him. And I'm very, very grateful, very, very grateful that I did because I wouldn't have gotten back the next day otherwise. So uh, thank you, Dan. And thank you, Miguel, if you're watching. Hope you are. Um, so speaking of Miguel, uh, I, when I decided to go, actually, let me s step back just one moment. Uh, the reason that part of the reason I decided to go up for Woolen Folk was because, um, I went online and, and I watched, um, several people's videos from last year. Uh, Nitty Natty was one that I really enjoyed. I think I watched it from start to finish and she did a good job of taking a lot of footage. It was really great. Um, much better than I did. I'm sorry if you've come here for footage. I've got some, but not that much. But anyway, um, she did a great job, and she may have done a great job this year too. I haven't seen it yet, but anyway, I watched her video, and I thought, you know what? That looks like a lot of fun. It looked different enough from New York Sheep and Wool. Obviously, there's vendors and people selling yarn and things like that, but um, just the vibe of it, all of the people out on the lawn, um, knitting, hanging out, the music, the food, it just, it just seemed really, really great. And so, um, I was very eager to experience that for myself. And I'm still eager <laughs> to experience that for myself because, as you probably know, um, this year's festival was not quite that. But before we get to that, um, back to Miguel, uh, once I decided I was going to go, uh, I wrote to him and, 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 well, he had offered, actually, he said, you know, we might have a place in our Airbnb uh, that you could sleep on a couch or what have you, and, and I'll ask. So he did, and um, as it turns out, there was a room, so I got a room and um, just stayed the one night. So I went up Friday, stayed the night, came back Saturday. So now to Woolen Folk. Um, I guess I should preface all of this by saying um, that part of me doesn't even want to talk about it only because, well, most of you watching this will have probably heard something or other already, and you know that there is a lot of, um, a lot of ne negative experiences from people there. And, you know, if you've watched enough episodes of, of my podcast here, then you know that I like to keep things positive, and as a general rule, I don't like to give a negative review of something. I would rather just not talk about it at all if it's negative. I'd rather just share positive things with you. But I did, however, tell you in the last episode that I was, in fact, going to go, and I did, and it would be dishonest if I just glossed everything over and um, said that it was all just fine. Um, and there were good things about it, and I'm going to share those too. So I, I, I will say that. However, um, it does need to be said that uh, there was, well from what I've read online and, and from probably what you've seen too, a lot of mismanagement, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of, um, well, the vendors, for example, just not, uh, what they showed up for was not what they thought they were showing up for. And they were not given the spaces that they were promised, et cetera, et cetera. And what that meant for folks like me who were showing up just to experience the place was that, um, well, one, it was very muddy. That's not the fault of any organizer, of course. That was the rain, and it's an outdoor venue. And had it been at the other place, it would have been outdoors too. Um, it seems like in the last two years that they did this, they were blessed with good weather. This year, not so much. So, um, but that wasn't really the problem, um, although it did make things muddy and a little slippery and, you know, a little dangerous at different parts. Um, but it also made it so that for the vendors who were outdoors, I didn't want to touch any of their, their wares or look at anything because, not that I'm clumsy or anything, but if I dropped something in the mud, I would have been <gasps> horrified. And um, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't good circumstances for looking at yarn and, and stuff like that. Um, but again, that wasn't in anyone's control so much, except that from what I have heard, 
well, maybe I shouldn't even say that because I, I, I don't want to spread hearsay. <laughs> what I heard might not be true. I don't know. So let me, you know what, scratch that. Let me just tell you about my own experience again. Going inside to where most of the vendors were in the building, um, it was a cool, from the outside, it looked like a, like an old warehouse that had been renovated to be an event space, that kind of thing. And um, Foreland, it is called, in Catskill, New York. And um, yeah, it, it looked fairly nice. And when we first walked in, we were there fairly early, so it, it wasn't too bad at first. Um, crowded, yes, but not too bad. But it didn't take very long before it was too bad. So the space was very cramped. There was hardly any space to move. And I'm not a person who is claustrophobic or really any kind of phobic. And I, um, I, I found myself at a certain point getting so far into the space and realizing that I was in a dead end way, way, way back far from the door. And I looked between where I was and the door, the only exit, and I was like, oh, I, I can't move. There's too many people. I cannot move. I couldn't get to the door if I wanted to. And God forbid that there were any kind of fire or anybody shouting fire or anything like that. Uh, this would have been chaotic. It would have been, um, you know, a, a really, really dangerous situation. Um, and that occurred to me while I was there. And then once, once that thought was in my head, all I could think about was, I need to get out of here. I need to not be here anymore. Now, I probably don't have to tell you that that's not the best mindset when you're shopping for yarn. You don't want to think to yourself, I have to get out of here and I do not want to go back in. <laughs> no, it's not good. Um, and uh, so anyway, right around the time that I had that thought though, and this is a good thing, this is a positive thing. I, I was internally going, oh no, oh no, oh no. And um, I hear a voice saying, Stephen, I watch your show. <laughs> and in that moment, I, I pulled it together and said, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, and, and struck up a conversation with the lovely Ashley who stopped me. And Ashley, if you're watching, hello. It was great talking to you. Um, now you know that I was freaking out inside. Uh, we were by Dragon Horde Yarns, and she was telling me about Dragon Horde and, and uh, what a cool vendor they were and, and Dyer, et cetera. And uh, we, you know, we're talking about the the experience so far being trapped back there and um and that was fun that was fun and I really enjoyed that conversation and and then you know we sort of crossed paths uh, elsewhere at the event that day and then the next day at Rhinebeck so it was nice to make a new friend and um connect in that way and I want to add I don't want to get this wrong so I have to look at my notes so Ashley who's from Canada um she runs a shop called the Shabby Motley the Shabby Motley. And I will put a link to that down below. Um, and you can look for her on Instagram as well. But anyway, uh, check her out. Check out her store. Um, I did get out of there, but then we went to the next building, which was actually worse. Yeah, it was worse. Um, there, <laughs> We walked into a, a, a... You had to go outside to go in. There's a the buildings were not connected. You walked out into the rain and walked into the next place. And um, there had more very nice interactions with some people. Uh, but not before just kind of like being lifted off the ground and moved with the sea of folks. Um, it, it, it movement was just crazy. I, I mean, I'm going to put some pictures up. I'll put some pictures up right now so you can see the place that I'm talking about. So there was this stairwell. You walked through a, 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 you know, floor of different shops and booths, and then you went through this door, and the steps went down, and as you can see in the picture, the, um, there, there's nowhere to go. But that was the way out, that you had to go through there to get out. Or you had to turn around and go through a, a space that was equally crowded. So once you were in there, you had no, no choice. And from that spot, from that where I took that picture, if you were to go over to the left and around to the side, 
Um, I walked back there because I saw uh, Jacob of Fiber Dreams by Jacob, who I knew only from Instagram, but I saw him there and thought, ah, I know you. And so I went to say hello, and he was there um, working for, representing uh, Circle of Stitches, which is the yarn shop in Salem, Massachusetts, which, as you know, if you've watched the previous episodes, um, I visited this summer. So a lot of uh, fun memories and a lot of lot of uh, new acquaintances and, and, and whatnot in conversation. So I went over and said hello, and, and it was just so cramped. They were in, like, I don't even know what it was. It was, I guess, an overlook into that down below space why there was even a little ledge there I couldn't tell maybe there may have been a hallway going off to the side now that I think about it but anyway it was so cramped it was so cramped and uncomfortable and and I feel I I feel terrible and I feel really bad for the vendors um if I can find it I will put a list of the vendors who were there I know you may have seen this from other people online that um they've put those out there so that you know people can support those particular vendors because they lost a lot of money. They didn't make a lot of sales. They couldn't make a lot of sales. You couldn't stop long enough to think and feel and make a sound decision. So my experience wasn't probably a lot of people were like this. I saw things that I really, really liked. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll come back to it. But then once I got out, I was like, no, I'm not going back to anything. Um, I can't, can't get back in there. So, um, Anyway, it was it was not ideal. But I walked down those steps, and down at the bottom there, I was able to say hello to some familiar faces. Um, Ray and Kevin from Needles at the Ready, Michael from Piece by Piece, uh, Piece for Piece Crafting, and um, also I, I turned around and, and Maxim Sear gave me a big hug, which was nice. Uh, we've communicated on Instagram. I've made several of his sweaters and, um, you know, just really think very highly of him. And, and so for him to recognize me, I was like, oh, I'm touched. But, um, but no sooner did he give me a hug than the sea of people parted us. And then uh, we were, you know, waving across the room. And in that moment, too, I also got to meet uh, Ron, who is a viewer of this podcast. Hello, Ron. And um, he was one that, that we chatted about book recommendations. And I was really glad to know that, you know, some of you watch to the end <laughs> and you uh, enjoy those recommendations. It's, uh, yeah, it just made me feel good. I'm an English teacher, remember? This is all a hobby. My job by day is that I'm an English and theater teacher. So, you know, I'm, my job is to make book recommendations and I have students and, you know, I, I want to believe that they read everything that I assign them to read. So it's nice to know <laughs> that there are folks out there that uh, like to read the book recs and chat about them. And um, maybe at some point we will have a book club associated with this podcast. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, I'll give that some thought. I don't know what we would start with, but yeah, putting it out there. If you'd be interested in the book club, leave a comment and let me know. And maybe I'll organize something in the future. But uh, anyway, it was nice to see Ron. And... um, yeah, so we, we all chatted as best we could, but, you know, people were pushing through, and eventually it was just like, okay, this this isn't going to work. So, walked back outside, and um, anyway, that was the worst of it from my own personal experience. So, again, vendors and, and sponsors and other people who have been involved have a l- much worse story to tell, um, and... They are telling those stories on their own podcasts and in their own posts, so I will leave it to them to speak for themselves, Um, but definitely check them out. And again, if I can find the link, I will um, share those vendors with you. But if if I can't find it, look around online, um, because like I said, some people are posting them. So what else? That that doesn't sum up the whole experience. There were other good things, too. Um, Okay. Remember uh, in the last episode, I believe I said this, um, one of the things, well, that doesn't sound right. One of the things I was most interested in experiencing, no, no, scratch that, rephrase it. Um, (laughs) When people ask, what are you most looking forward to in these, uh, in going to Rhinebeck, um, my response was, I want to meet Amy Palco and the Scottish ladies from the Scottish Yarn Festival and the Scottish Yarn Journal. Journal of Scottish Yarns, I believe it is actually. And um, 
they were there at Woolen Folk with their own booth. And uh, so I got to meet Ava and Katie, and um, they were very friendly, very, very warm. And the reason that I was so interested in meeting them, um, it, as I've explained in different posts and, and explained to them too, is that I've really just... I, I love exploring all the different aspects of knitting, all the different traditions. Right now I'm wearing a sort of Norwegian-style, Icelandic-style sweater, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but I'm very, very... I don't know, very drawn to the Scottish traditions. Um, I love Shetland wool, Shetland lace. Uh, I love Fair Isle knitting. I have participated in a traditional cap making uh, month. I've um, made some gloves as well from the Shetland Wool Week annual. The, the pattern is from there. And um, I'm ready to make some bigger things in, in traditional Fair Isle. And so I was looking for yarns and, and whatnot that might fit that. I didn't find the specific yarn. I didn't come home with the specific yarns, I should say, uh, from this weekend. But uh, at the Scottish Yarn Festival, they do have some beautiful, beautiful yarns, which I'll put the picture up here. My pictures, by the way, are not very good from that day because I was a little distracted and didn't take very many. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I'm planning to order from them. But they weren't able to travel with lots of inventory from Scotland, So, um, but they had some representatives of their their wares, and I'm going to get some of those to work on a sweater vest because, as I've said to others, I feel like I'm entering my sweater vest phase of life. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just feeling drawn to it. <laughs> and so here we go. Let, let it begin. Um, anyway, so I chatted with Ava and Katie and um, had a really nice time with them. I saw Amy Palco at the event. She was giving a talk and she was wandering around but she was swarmed by other people so I didn't say hello in that moment I just figured well I'll I hope I'll see her at Rhinebeck tomorrow and I did but more on that later um so that was wonderful getting to see them and getting to see the yarns that I'm going to buy here eventually um I also met a new friend Pedro through um Miguel and um Jesus and Jen oh I didn't talk about Jesus and Jen I need to go back and start at the beginning. So the Airbnb I stayed with with Miguel, um, it was um, organized through uh, Jesus and Jen, who are from Colorado, and uh, folks also that I've followed online on, on Instagram but never met personally. And uh, through them met uh, Pedro, who also know from Instagram, but not personally, but now I do. So lots of uh, faces to go with the the names and the pictures that I've seen before but but never really realized that I knew until I saw them. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, who else? Who else? Ah, I saw Vincent uh, from Vesuvius Crafts. We talked about crocheting. And Vincent, um, if you are watching this or anybody who's watching this, I wanted to tell you that I, I said to him that I, I, not just because of him, but because of many of the crocheters that I've seen uh, on Instagram and elsewhere, I've, I've developed a much stronger, keener interest to learn how to do it. And this week I did in our um, knitting and crochet club after school. Uh, the teacher that I work with who teaches crochet, she showed me for the third time how to do it. And I told her, this time it's going to work. I'm going to get it. And I did. I did. I did a pretty good job. I learned how to chain, double crochet, and she said it looked really good. So... I'm on my way. I don't have a project in line yet, but I'm glad to know the basics and eager to learn some more. So I met uh, Vincent, and then uh, right around that same moment, said hello to Linda and Lorelai, and I want to say Mary and Alice, but I'm sorry if those are the wrong names. Um, but Linda said hello to me, and she's been watching the podcast for a while, so thank you, Linda. Hello to you. Um, and, and also, by the way, Linda... If you're watching this, um, I don't know if we're fr friends on Instagram. It's hard to know sometimes because people go by different names. You know, we all do. And uh, you could follow somebody and not be sure of it. So I'm not sure if we do. If we are, then great. And if not, then please let me know how to find you. <laughs> um, but uh, Linda has a uh, shop in Virginia. And, oh, I didn't write this down, but I'm pretty sure I remember it correctly. It was Needle in the Hay Market, something like that. Needles Haymarket. I'll put a link in down below so that you can find her shop too if you're in the area. Um, but anyway, great seeing her and um, Lorelai and the others. And um, I saw them again at Rhinebeck the next day and had a lovely conversation with them too. Uh, who else did I see? 
Ah, yes. Uh, ran into Jen Geigley. Now, it's funny. Um, I, I didn't know Jen or, or her work before, um, but Ruth, who follows me, uh, or who I'm friends with on Instagram, uh, pointed out that uh, when I made a reel about the MCAL, the Mystery Knit Along, and my yarns that I was using, she pointed out that, oh, Jen Geigley has the same kits, and I didn't know who Jen was at the moment, but um, I watched her reel, and, and it was really funny because we had the same kit. We also almost made the same reel. Both of us used David Bowie music as the uh, <laughs> the, the music for the reel. And um, I think I used Changes and she used Ground Control to Major Tom or whatever the title of that is. It's not that. Um, Space Oddity? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. So <laughs> we clearly have very, very similar tastes Jen and I, and, and so then she and I communicated through Instagram and um, said we would try to cross paths at Rhinebeck, and we did. And uh, so here's a picture of us. Uh, we're, this is my finished Clue 1, my second Clue 1. More on the MCAL later, by the way. I'm going to make a separate MCAL episode. I'm not going to talk about that in this one because I've got too much content already to talk about today without that. But anyway... Um, yeah, so it's coming along anyway, and that's what it looks like at the moment, and that's Jen, and we uh, had fun catching up in that moment. And then I ran into Arena and uh, of Fiber Chats, and we had a great time chatting. She was with the Scottish Yarn uh, Festival Women, and she was she kind of introduced me to them because she knew that I really wanted to meet them, so she made that introduction. And I want to say too, um, as a little plug for Irina. Um, you know, this whole weekend, there were so many people that I approached and saw and knew about because I saw their interviews on Fiber Chats. So the Scottish Yarn Festival was one. Amy Palco's one. I first heard about her. She's, you know, quite a popular podcaster, but I didn't know about her until um, she was interviewed by Irina and I saw that. So um, there was that and some more later on books that I'm going to share with you. The authors were on her channel. And um, I just find that channel to be a source of a lot of um, really, really wonderful information about the people who are part of the industry, part of the community, and um, just so many conversations begin with, oh, I saw you on Fiber Chats. So um, I'll put the links to all the ones that I, I, I mention in this episode. But um, if you haven't watched them, you should just scroll down. She's got hundreds now. And, you know, some are very influential people in the fiber industry and world and some are just you and me uh, <laughs> people who are really passionate and who she's gotten to know through Instagram and whatnot uh, and and she interviews knitters crocheters quilters weavers all kinds of folks who are involved in all different aspects so um, it's a lot of fun you should take take a look through her um, her back catalog and uh, what you, you can spend literally hundreds of hours catching up because she's done a lot. So that's uh, that's Fiber Chats. Check it out. All right. Does that conclude the Wool and Folk experience? I think so. Nope, nope, nope. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, because I forgot to say, in that very first um, push through that first building... Um, I did buy one thing. I bought one thing and I left it. I thought I brought all my yarn over here to share with you, but I left it. So hold on one moment. Okay. Um, I'm back, but wow. As I, as I can walk back to my seat, I just noticed the moon. I don't know if you all can see this and I can't zoom in, but uh, it's hard. There we go. That little white dot up there, not the ring light, but there right above my head, that's the moon rising up. Maybe you've been watching it up here this whole time. I hope so. I hope, hope you're able to see that. <laughs> okay, so I uh, got this little sock yarn set from Woolens and Nosh, and um, it, they were tucked away in a, a corner not too far away from the door, but I think the, the colors are showing up very nicely. Yeah. It's... Uh, very Christmassy or very Italian flaggy if you want to see it that way. Um, so these are going to be a great sock set and maybe two socks. I don't know. Maybe I'll do 
two pairs of small socks. We'll see what I can squeeze out of this. Um, but uh, yeah, these are going to be a great gift for somebody for Christmas. And um, working that booth was Caleb the Crafter. Um, that's his name on Instagram, Caleb Richter. I believe this is an actual last name, um, but uh, someone that I followed for a long time and also got to see and chat with for a bit. So there you go. Um, that concludes the Wool and Folk experience. Um, I wish it had been more like what I was expecting from the videos that I saw, and I'm not the only one. Um, obviously, that was everybody's hope, and I don't know what the future holds for that, that festival, but we shall see. And um, I should also say, even though I didn't attend all of these, there are several other yarn events that have sprung up in the area, kind of, um, I guess, alongside the New York Sheep and Wool. Um, Cake Palooza and Indian Tangled are also up there. So perhaps next year I will attend one of those, or both, and we'll see. So that night we went to a um, great little Mexican restaurant in Tivoli, New York, a town I'd never heard of but it was beautiful. We also went to a yarn shop there. After a day of yarn, we went to a yarn shop uh, called Fabulous Yarns. It's to the point, isn't it? Fabulous Yarns. Um, and they lived up to their name. They had fabulous yarns. They did. Uh, but anyway, that was right a block away or so from the, the restaurant. Excuse me. And um, from there, we went back to the Airbnb and sat on the porch had some wine, worked on our projects, and went to bed fairly early because we had a big day the next day. And um, that brings me to the main event, uh, Saturday, which was New York Sheep and Wool. So we got up, we went and had um, some breakfast sandwiches at a little place in Kingston. I don't remember the name of it, but it was really, really good. And then we continued on to Rhinebeck, and we were there pretty close to the beginning. And that's, uh, here's, here's my one pro tip for you. I don't have too many. But um, when we got to the entrance and we were walking inside, scanned our tickets, etc., um, you may not know this if you have never gone before, but each year there is a sort of um, a souvenir bag, uh, a, a New York sheep and wool bag. And every year it's different. And they, I even think they might have you vote on it. Somebody did tell me that they voted on it in the past. Um, I never have. But anyway, uh, they're always beautiful. They're always very sturdy and, and, and well-made. And um, they sell out quickly. So if you get there early on the first day and you have cash, then, well, this year anyway, I don't know if they do it every year, but I would assume that they do. They had a whole stack of them right there at the entrance. And so here is my New York sheep. Isn't that pretty? Look at those colors. Are there sheep that are really that color? I would like to think so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very big, uh, very, very spacious inside. Let me get this open for you. Cool pockets, lots of, um, lots of space. So obviously, they're hoping that you will fill it <laughs> during your day there. And I did not, actually, to be honest with you. Um, I did buy some things, which I'll share with you in a moment, but didn't fill the bag. Uh, didn't need to uh, because most of the time was spent um, just wandering, looking, enjoying the ambiance, the environment, the atmosphere, and chatting with people and meeting friends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but um, I am going to uh, make a little montage. I will share, all, you know, I'm going to share all of my videos at once. Just get that out of the way so you can see walking through some of the spaces, some of the animals, and, and really sort of get the vibe for what this whole experience is like. This is especially for those who have never been to it, and in the hopes that you might in the future. I am not paid by the festival uh, to say these things. I really just love it so much, um, as many people do. Obviously, people have traveled from around the world to be there, and um, they wouldn't do that if it wasn't a special experience, and it really is. So um, anyway, here's a little uh, montage. Enjoy.
I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so that's what it looks like. That's what it feels like to be there somewhat. Um, what to tell you about the specifics of what I did? Let's see. Um, well, I wanted to say all of the people that I saw the day before, um, well, not all of them, but most of the people that I saw the day before, um, I saw again at Rhinebeck. I should also say this to you. You probably know, but you may not. Um, you'll hear people refer to Rhinebeck, and they mean New York Sheep and Wool. And some people now might hear Rhinebeck and think New York Sheep and Wool and Woolen Folk and Indian Tangle. They all get lumped together under the, the umbrella of Rhinebeck, um, which isn't exact. Really, it's New York Sheep and Wool that is in Rhinebeck, which is why it's called that. Um, but the town has lent its name to the event and never the twain shall part. Um, but anyway, whilst there at Rhinebeck, I uh, ran into a few more people that I did not see the day before. So they included Danae. I think I'm saying that right, and I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Here's Danae's picture. So Danae, if that's you, if you see yourself, uh, and if I did say your name wrong, correct me. Let me know in the comments. But um, she stopped me to say hello. She'd been watching the podcast and really enjoying it, and that was very nice to see her. Um, I saw Gail and Christina from Crafty Bees, Florida. Um, they've got a uh, channel here on YouTube as well. And not only are they yarny like the rest of us, they're also beekeepers in Florida. Um, so yeah, check them out. Uh, I'm eager to see their channel as well and get to know them a little better. Um, they were a lot of fun to chat with. So uh, who else? Who else? Um, OK. So finally, um, I did get to meet Amy Palco. And um, the reason why this was so special to me is, uh, I believe I probably mentioned this early on in one of these episodes, but it was because I saw her interview on Fiber Chats that I watched her own podcast. And um, I was really just drawn to her, her ethos, her intention, her, <laughs> I don't know what the, the right word is. Uh, she seemed like good people. And I really just liked the, the feeling that she, um, the way that she came across on the screen and the, the sincerity and the genuineness of her character. And um, that was from her interview with Irina, but then also in her podcast. And, and you know, she's very, uh, she's very, uh, what am I trying to say? She's very loving and um, encouraging of, of other people and, and encouraging their creative endeavors. And um, there were, you know, things that she said that made me think to myself, I could maybe do a podcast. I had been thinking about it before seeing her hers. And um, before that, I just kept, you know, talking myself out of it, saying, why should I do that? You know, I, what do I have to say that hasn't been said, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here's a total musical geek nerd aside, but since I'm going to be in a Sondheim show next week, um, some of you may know the play Sunday in the Park with George, but that scene at the end, you know the one I'm talking about if you know the show, um, where George Surratt is talking with the ghost of his great-grandmother, and he's at a crossroads. He doesn't know what he's going to do with his life, his art anymore. I'm sorry, it's the young, it's the grandson of George, great-grandson of George Surratt talking with his great-grandmother, who was the mistress of George Surratt. It's all very convoluted, but the point is this. He sings this line. He says, I have nothing to say. And she says, what does she say? And so now that I'm trying to do it, I can't. Um, I have nothing to say. You have many things, she says. Well, nothing that's not been said, is his response. And she says, said by you, though, George in that Bernadette Peters voice. And, um, <laughs> boy, I wasn't expecting to go through all that on this episode. That was, that was, that was Amy Palco talking to me. Said by you, though, Stephen. And, um, here we are a year later and 11 episodes in. And, um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the little sort of push to do it. And therefore, that is why I was so excited to meet her in person. We had exchanged messages uh, in in the past. And um, sorry, the screen went blank there for a minute. We had exchanged messages on Instagram and, and chit-chatted a bit, but never met in person. And I was very grateful and very touched to meet her. And um, pictured here 
at Rhinebeck uh, together. And also, uh, as I was saying hello to her, I met uh, a new friend, Maya. That's Maya there to the right. And um, anyway, it was it was uh, it was what I was hoping for, and it was a beautiful experience to say hello and give her a hug and hope to see her again one day, maybe in Scotland. Here's another fun, funny fact, because you know that I've talked many times throughout these episodes about my time living in the UK. I've lived in the UK for over a year and gone back many, many times, and I've never been to Scotland. It's true. I've never been there. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Like I told you, I'm very, very drawn to all things Scottish when it comes to knitting, especially. I don't know, but we'll change that soon in the future, I hope. Okay, now, let's see. Those are the people. Ah, no, they're not. So here's the last person I want to mention. Um, and please forgive me if I forgot to mention people at all. I, I really had hoped to um, chat with about anybody that I had some meaningful time with. Oh, um, Caleb of All Things Caleb. I got to chat with him and got to know him a little bit um, on the hill. Uh, but the one that I wanted to, to mention here at the end is Martha Fishy. Let me look. Let me look. Is it fish or fishy? Martha Fish Henderson. <laughs> um, she stopped me just as I was leaving. Remember I told you that I had to catch a ride with somebody so that I could make it back. And so I was supposed to meet him, I think, at 3.15. And... Um, I was near the entrance, but it was 3.10, and I had just a few minutes, so I was rushing to the bathroom, and on the way, Martha shouted, out, hey, Stephen, and um, she's been watching the show. Hello, Martha. Um, but uh, she, she told me that she was um, really, she loved the fact that um, I talked about the St. Brigid sweater and was wearing it that day, actually, no, no, sorry, I wore it the day before, more on that later. Um, I was wearing the St. Brigitte, I was talking about the St. Brigitte sweater by Alice Starmore on the channel here. And um, she loved Starmore patterns too and was inspired to make it. And um, it was just, it, it was great to know that, well, like I said at the beginning, that this channel could, it could inspire people. I mean, you know, it could be just as easily me talking to hear myself talk, but it's nice to know that people are watching and um, wanting to to make some of the things that I've made. And honestly, um, about that sweater, I know I mentioned this in the episode when I talked about it more in depth, but I, I first learned about it from a podcast or a video, vlog, whatever we call it, I don't even know. But uh, Fruity Knitting, I watched um, Fruity Knitting one of the very early episodes, it might even be the first episode with um, Andrea and Andrew, and he was wearing it, and I saw that sweater, and I thought, I have to make that. I love that. I want that. And and I did, and I made it exactly the way he made it, with the exact same yarn, which is the yarn that um, the pattern calls for, which is Alice Starmore's own line. And um, anyway, I was inspired by seeing it in a video, and Martha was inspired by seeing a video, and may the inspiration continue. I, I love that um, this is an art form that we do that can travel like that from person to person. You see something, and that's, by the way, the beauty of an event like Rhinebeck. You're walking around and you're seeing all these people with, with their shawls and their hats and their sweaters, and it's, um, it's really, really incredible. And yes, there is an ego boost every time someone stops you to comment on your own work, but it's, that's nice. The real thing, though, is to see all the other stuff, all the millions of things that you haven't made yet and that you will get to make now that you know about them. And um, I love that. I just love it. So anyway, I, <laughs> the funny thing, though, I, the reason I I've saved Martha for last is because she was the last person that I spoke to before leaving. And I almost said, like, I got to run to the bathroom because I got to go. I almost cut it short, but I said, nope, 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 let me, if I have to be a little late, I, I'm somebody that hates being late, and I, if somebody's going out of their way to give me a ride home, I do not want to keep them waiting, and I didn't, I made it on time, <laughs> but <laughs> I was worried in the moment that I might not, so, uh, but I was very, very happy that I, that we spoke, and thank you, Martha, for approaching me there at the end, it was a lot of fun meeting you. Okay, now. 
Are we ready for the haul? Are we ready to talk stuff? Um, I'm just making sure that I did, in fact, cover everything. I think I did. Okay. So let's begin with the yarns that I got. I didn't get that much. Um, really just two things. Um, so two, not these two things, although there are two skeins here. So uh, one of the first places that I, first vendors that I saw when I walked in uh, was Feederbrook Farms. And um, look at these lovelies. Aren't those nice? So I had hoped when I saw these, I saw these and I thought, you know what? These would be great in a yoke of some kind. And um, actually, I'm going to share with you uh, the vendor who checked me out and her sweater that she was wearing because um, what she had on really kind of inspired me. Um, something like that. Something that, that has something, I don't know, silhouette and reflective -y. Um But uh, anyway, I love these colors. There they are again. So that you can love them too. And um, I had hoped to find a, a sweater quantity of some other kind of um, base color, just a solid to go with them. And I was looking throughout the day and then, well then, noon happened and I got the information that my train was going to be canceled. So then that really kind of sucked my, <laughs> sucked the joy out of me a bit. Because all of a sudden it was like, how am I going to get home? I had to figure this out. So I went into problem solving mode and not yarn shopping mode. And then once I got out of that, just, you know, it didn't happen. Um, but I got lots of ideas and, and lots of people to follow up with that I will look for a base. And I think I kind of want to just make my own design with it. Um, design my own yoke and have some fun doing that. I think that'll be really cool. Um, so I got those and then, this is very exciting. Um, you see this, this little guy, tiny little thing, kind of bluish gray. Well, this is, um, my very first Kiviet. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Kiviet. If you don't know what Kiviet is, um, it comes from a musk ox, a very large Arctic animal that needs lots of soft fur to keep itself warm. And um, anyway, it, uh, it's, it's one of the most expensive fibers. And I don't say that to brag because what I got was a blend. <laughs> it's not 100% pure. They had 100% pure. And you could get this little guy. Let me get the label in here for you so you can see it. Yeah, there you go. You could get 100% of this. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, actually, Windy Valley Muskox, that's the company. Um, but you can see their website if you would like to go to that. 150 bucks for um, pure Kiviet. I didn't want to spend that quite that amount just yet. Since I've never used this, I wanted to make something um, and just get a feel for it. So what I've got here is a blend. It is, can you see that? Oh, you can, good. 15% Kiviuk. Uh, and 80% extra fine merino wool, 5% mulberry silk. It's amazingly soft. And mm, mm, it just feels like a dream. Um, and, the, and the reason I got just this one was um, they had quite a few samples of things that you could make with just one skein. So this is going to be a small little lacy scarf. And this may be a Christmas present for somebody. I say that so that many people will get excited and then disappointed. Mm, sorry. No, actually, I know who I'm going to make it for. <laughs> I already have someone in mind. Um, but it's a Christmas present, so I can't say who. Don't ask. Um, I then purchased these buttons. I'll show them to you one at a time, actually. Oops. Aren't those fun? Can you tell that I have a color palette that I like? Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, there was this button vendor. She does not have a website. I think everything was cash only. Um, 
you can't order online. She only goes to shows. She had a sign that said all of this. So um, I was like, well, let me look at these buttons. And a um, lot of cool stuff. I mean, some things very vintage, some things not, some things newer, a whole range of prices, whole range of everything. But um, colors, tons of different colors, tons of different materials. And um, anyway, so I saw, I found the buttons I like, and, and I thought, well, okay, now I need a cardigan. Now I need something to, to make with them. Uh, and I don't have a project in mind yet, but I kind of like the fact that I'm, the idea is beginning with the buttons. And we shall see. Here they are again, one more time. Because they're so pretty. Look at that. So, yeah. Don't know what they're going to be, but they'll be something. Um, and that is all I bought in terms of stuff that I'm going to make into something else. But I did get the bag, as I showed you before, and a few books. So, um, let me talk you through these. The first one I want to share, this is, is, is so beautiful. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Well, you can tell, I guess. Um, this is not a dust jacket. This is the cover, and um, it's really beautiful. So Grand Shetland Adventure Knits by Gudrun Johnston and Mary Jane Mucklestone. Both of them were there um, at, the, at the fair, and they signed the book for me. <laughs> And I shall adventure on. Thank you, Mary Jane and Gudrun. Um, but anyway, uh, I loved, I, I was really grabbed by the cover. Yes, I judged the book by its cover. And, um, but then I flipped through it, and there's just some gorgeous patterns in here. I don't, it's kind of hard to show you these things like this, but that's not attractive. That's just a page of a pattern. Oh, my God. I'm a mess. I kind of like that. Um, I think I might wear that. Anyway, there's great stories, there's great patterns, great things to make in here. Um, Grand Shetland Adventure Knits, so you might want to check that out. Then, um, this one, again, actually these next two are people that I saw on Arena's Fiber Chats channel. I will tell you about each one individually, but I want to hold them both up here. So uh, we'll start with Cozy Coastal Knits um, by Roseanne Fleischauer. Um, Irina had talked about this a few times, and she was there very, very friendly, very lovely. Also signed, hers says there, Dear Stephen, happy knitting, enjoy every stitch and fiber chats. <laughs> and uh, she's, she's got beautiful designs in here. Um, she describes at the beginning, <laughs> they are things that you can wear on a... Uh, you know, wintry beach in New England or just a cool lake anywhere and um, ponchos, shawls, uh, stuff, stuff for keeping warm by the windy seaside. And I think there's going to be a lot of things that I can make in there uh, as presents for people. And um, yeah, and it's just, it's a very beautiful book, just really, really well made. And finally, um, this one. The knitting pattern writing book. And so when I saw um, Christina and Sarah on um, Fiber Chats talking about this, I thought, done, done. I, I knew, same as with the Scottish Yarn Festival, um, this was these were vendors, these were authors that I wanted to see and, and made a point of going to find. And so when I found them, um, I told them, I've been looking for you, <laughs> and I've been looking for this book for years. This, I've been wanting this for years. I'm so glad it finally exists. Um, because, uh, yeah, they go through the step-by-step -step of, of what goes into a really good pattern. And I haven't read it all yet, but um, I'm going to... I've, I've cracked it open and just looked at the introduction. I just cracked it open now to Chapter 6, Common Sweater Pitfalls. Isn't that useful information to know? So... Um, yeah, I will be keeping you all abreast of my readings through this and what I learn. And I know that it's going to help me um, to start to write some patterns of my own, which I have started, but I did find difficult. You know, it's funny because I'm sure, as many of you, uh, we look at so many patterns. You've spent a lot of time staring at them, right? But uh, to sit down and write it and to really, not to think about what goes into it. I know what goes into it, but to say it right, to write it right and get it to state it in the most succinct and concise manner is, um, it's a challenge. It's, I mean, it's technical writing and it's, it's 
not easy. And it looks like it's easy because, you know, we're looking at professionals who do this for a living. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm eager to, uh, to move forward with that and to share what comes of it soon, hopefully. <laughs> I've been writing patterns, working on a pattern for the socks that I've shown here in uh, several episodes. And, um, yeah, I think it'll be done. Let, let's say a month. I'll give myself a month. No, you, no, no. I'm not going to give myself a month. I'll tell you why. Because next month is November, and November is National Novel Writing Month. And um, the draft of my novel that I finished back in April, I kind of haven't really, really touched it since then. Um, but, but, after this past weekend, um, it's really funny because I, so many things I experienced, just the people, the conversations, all of it, I got a lot of ideas for things I wanted to add into the book. And that's really, I mean, in the book right now, it's a murder mystery. And I've got the main thread. I know the beginning and the ending and the main events of the middle. But I don't have all of the side stuff that's going to be fun diversions that will, you know, I don't have the... the I know who done it, but I don't know who didn't do it and what their stories are that are going to throw you for a loop. But I do now because of uh, conversations from this weekend. So I think maybe I just needed the time to sit with it and come back to it. But since next month is National Novel Writing Month, and that's kind of an organized um, event, if you don't know, um, people who participate in it, they, have, they set themselves a goal of writing 50,000 words by the end of the month. Technically, you are supposed to start on day one with zero. I'm starting day one with 20,000 words already written. Oops. But um, eh, whatever. I'm going to harness that energy because I've done it in the past, and I did write drafts of novels in the past from zero to 50,000. Um, just by attending events and, and, and writing with other writers and and kind of doing it as a social thing and you know you build a community of people that are keeping you accountable and so that's really helpful to me I'm the type of person that responds well to that kind of encouragement and um, anyway that's what I'll be doing in November and then in December the Jersey City Writers are having a writers retreat um, for a weekend uh, out in the country in Pennsylvania which is a beautiful beautiful place I'm going to go there and do that again and by that time I should have a 50,000 full page 50,000 word, full draft completed, at which point I can start the editing. So by the new year, shortly after the new year, hopefully, I'll have a really solid um, version of this. And then I will be looking for people to read it to give me some feedback. So let me know. <laughs> um, anyway, that is why I probably won't finish writing those patterns in November, but who knows, maybe I will. As for knitting through November, um, I'll be pulling back a little bit so that I can devote my evening times to writing as well, but I still have my MCAL to finish, and um, I'm, I've only just finished Clue 2, so tonight I'm going to start Clue 3 after I'm done editing all of this and posting it, if, I'm, if I still have any time. Um, and let's see. Is that that? No, it's not. Um... One more thing, one more thing about Rhinebeck um, and, and the reason that I'm wearing this particular sweater. So I, um, one of the things that I love about Rhinebeck, one more thing that I love about it is that you see a lot of the same vendors from year to year and you develop friendships and relationships with them. And so when I first went there, I've only been three times, but the first time I went, I just went up for the day with a friend and I walked out with a sweater's quantity of yarn this sweater's quantity of yarn from Flying Fibers, who are based in Pennsylvania. And so it, in that, I, I chatted at length with um, Irina, is her name, who works there with her family. And um, that was, you know, very nice and pleasant, et cetera, et cetera. Last year, when I went for the second time, I had this sweater made, so I brought it and wore it so that I could show it to her because, you know, it's like, these are your sheep and you know this yarn better than anybody else and I want to share with you and she was very very excited to see that and um this followed you know postings about it online etc etc so last year we chatted a little while and and not very long these aren't long exchanges she's there to work and I'm not there to take up all that time from her but uh but she remembered me and I was very touched and so this year I went back again 
and uh, thought I might find a base for these. Um, I didn't find quite what I was looking for, although I might still go back. In fact, the orange, oh yeah, now that I'm holding this here like this, that copper color, that matches pretty well. Maybe these are going to work. Maybe I've talked myself into it right now. Hmm. Um, anyway, <laughs> went back this year and um, she was very busy, but recognized me immediately and said hello. And I bring that up just because, um, you know, like I said, not best friends. We don't know each other that well. But uh, to, to have that kind of long-term um, acquaintanceship and and to to get to see her and and her daughter who I think the first time I met her she was pregnant with and then last year was a baby and now a bit of a toddler um, it, it, it's it's really neat to see those kinds of um, to, to see relationships like that develop over time I guess that's what I'm trying to say um, there's something really special about that and um, I had mentioned to Irina of Fiber Chats that she should interview arena of flying fibers <laughs> all very confusing but um and she still should uh but i i wanted to throw out there that uh the other day i was watching an episode of cabin boy knits and they happened to go to flying fibers to their um to their place and to, to their shop and their farm and they they did an interview and, and just showed the shop and it's beautiful and it's it's very very well done and then i wanted to um shout all of them out, Flying Fibers and Cabin Boy Knits, and I'll put a link there for you to watch that episode. I thought it was really excellent, and I enjoyed it immensely. And, um, yeah, and I love Flying Fibers, so check them out, too. They've got great, great stuff. Okay, um, my recording timer says that this is now over an hour, and that's without the montage, which I'm going to add. So this episode's probably going to be, ooh, an hour and ten or so, um, which is great. I will see you all next time. We will talk about the um, mystery knit along. I will probably check in again or make a video again after this performance is done of the frogs and after I have finished clue three, but before I finish the whole thing because it's going to take me a little bit of time. So uh, I look forward to that maybe a week or so. And until then, I hope you are well. I hope you... Um, have happy knitting and happy yarning and crocheting and whatever it is that you're doing, be happy with it because it's a joy to get to do these kinds of things. Aren't we very lucky? All right, everyone. I will see you next time.